Hello everyone and welcome back to another CT Yankee Jr. video. Sorry about the long wait, it's been a while since I posted the last uh, YouTube video on our channel. Been busy with uh, swim practice, I'm on the swim team at my high school. My dad's been working on the 1220 Wallace tractor. It turned into a long project and we'll be making a video on that shortly. Uh, I've been busy with a National History Day project. Um, I specifically did the category documentary, so when I get the results for that, I will be posting the video onto our channel and you can enjoy my talk about the Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933. And finally, there'll be a video out shortly about the Hebron Maple Fest tractor parade. I went to that with my Silver King tractor and uh, there were about 90 tractors there and huge crowds. It was a big event and uh, it was pretty fun. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is about uh, part two of the barns construction. My dad will be here talking about that. So subscribe, like the video, comment, and share with your friends. Please join us for part three of Building the Bank Barn series and for any other videos to come. See you later. So the next part of the construction here was finishing the excavation. Uh, the excavation was not easy as I talked about in the last video. Lead, we hit ledge and uh, the, we tried to offset the building and that didn't help. So we finally settled on putting it where I originally intended to put it, just not as far uh, into the ground, raised the whole footprint of the building up. But in the end, it worked out just fine. Um, I hired Made Informed Concrete. Uh, Doug from Made Informed, he came in and formed up the footings and got them all in place uh, rather quickly. I think within uh, one week's time, we had footings poured and the foundation walls were in place and ready to be poured.
did an excellent job. Once uh, he put the footings in, the walls were up very quick. Uh, they're 10 inch thick concrete walls with rebar and there's a step in the front of the foundation so we could have a couple windows in there for the lower section for the basement section and uh, once he was done it was time to get uh, building um, a friend uh, Bob helped do the uh, entire barn between my son Bob and uh, myself we uh, did the construction of the entire barn. I brought in uh, lots of stone and you'll see some pictures of the drainage I put in. So we did curtain drains all the way around the outside of the footing or footing drains you could call it, but there it did drainage all the way around and even went underneath the footing in one spot and brought drainage to the inside of the foundation floor. Then we proceeded to bring in several uh, triaxial loads of stone to bring, uh, to make sure that we had good drainage. Uh, we covered up uh, the curtain drains all the way around the outside. We did them, covered, then covered them with fabric after we stoned or we put fabric, filter fabric, more stone on top, and then started the backfilling process from there. And after we, before we did the backfilling, we, I had somebody come in and treat, uh, spray coat the whole outside waterproofing the foundation, which a uh, very important step in uh, maintaining uh, the moisture level inside the building. Uh, after we did that, we got uh, two inch rigid foam insulation and place the foam insulation all around the whole outside perimeter of the foundation and then carefully started to backfill the foundation. That was a tough part to backfill it with the material that we would have without damaging the foam insulation on the side of the building. So um, once that was backfilled, I was under the gun to get it backfilled and ready for the construction. So. Uh, did it in a rather short period of time. The weather was cooperating a little better at, at that point. Uh, got it totally backfilled, rough graded. It was still pretty rough around the outside, but we got it rough graded and ready for the, um, the main carrying beams and uh, the floor to be constructed. Next portion of this video will show us uh, setting the main carrying beams in, which were 14 inch uh, laminated beams, triples, 14 inch triples. Uh, we used the excavator to, to uh, lift those heavy beams into place. And then we we're off to setting the uh, floor joists in. And that went rather quickly. Um, only problem we had is working off of my 1720 Ford tractor. We didn't quite have the lift height that I needed, but we made it work. We made some uh, we made some blocking up on top of a man lift and was able to uh, maneuver underneath and set all of those uh, joists into place.
once the joists were in place, we moved on to the uh, flooring, which uh, was a two by six, a true two by six tongue groove uh, pine flooring and makes for a very sturdy floor. Uh, that uh, laid out rather quickly. I think it took us, uh, I don't know, just a bit, little bit over a day to get the floor down. And um, it was tough making sure that you got the floor, uh, got the tongue and groove interlocked all the way and into place. That was the hardest part. Um, and making sure you're, you stayed straight going across, meaning um, where the boards met each other. Uh, it, it was a straight line all the way across the floor. So that, that was uh, a little bit of a challenge, but uh, it went well on the floor. It's a great floor. I love it. Hope you enjoyed part two of building the bank barn series please join us for part three i'll be posting it in a little bit so stay tuned subscribe to our channel like the video comment and share with your friends thank you very much and i'll see you next time